Good morning. Welcome to Sycamore Creek Church in Potterville. My name is Kevin. I am the worship leader. Really glad that you're joining us for worship this morning as we continue our series, You're Not Far, uh, which is a, a study of the book of Mark. We have a discussion question to kick things off today. It's this, and who, who is a leader who has positively impacted you? Um, and for me, it's interesting. I mean, there's so many people who've had a positive impact on my life, but one of my first thoughts goes to a couple of teachers who I've had, um, and they kind of modeled leadership for me in, a, in, in their own specific way. One was a professor that I had in seminary who taught New Testament, and it was with him, it was Dr. Sean McDonough, um, just incredible passion for knowledge, knowledge of the Bible, knowledge about God, and but but even more so, I think the way that he was so passionate about and loved, loved God and loved people. He just mo- seemed to just model that every single day in class. And um, then also one of my teachers in writing school, um, and for with him, his name's Brett Anthony Johnston, great writer. You should check him out. Um, it was the fact that he was always great about not just not just being able to explain what we were doing, but be able to explain why we did it and why it was important. Um, not just saying, hey, this is what we do in class, this is what we're learning, but this is why we're doing this. And I think that's another great kind of leadership ability is to be able to explain why we do something. So talk about that in the chat bar, those you're with. Uh, who's a leadership a leader who has positively impacted you? We are going to also kick off our service at the time of song. I invite you to sing along with me.
send it over to Mark now. Grace and peace be with you. Good morning. My name is Mark. I'm the pastor at Sycamore Creek in Potterville. I'm thrilled that you are with us today for our online worship services. We are continuing our series, You're Not Far, based on the book of Mark. We've got another great message coming your way today. We are at the time in the service where I'm going to invite you to go and find a candle. Uh, Get that candle, light that candle, as a reminder of Christ's presence with us today as we worship, our focus today is on Christ and on God's love shown for us through Jesus. And in response, we face it and embrace it, as we have been saying throughout this series. Uh, we repent and we believe. Uh, we turn away from the things that we would do on our own, the ways we would miss the mark, and we turn to God and to God's righteousness available through Jesus. You got your candle, I'm going to light mine here, and uh, I invite you to light yours as well. As we look to the light of Christ, represented by that candle, I'm going to invite you to pray with me. Uh, Throughout this series, we have been looking at Jesus' life, and we've been looking at how Jesus had a new teaching, a radical new teaching, that ushered in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not far, is what we've been repeating again and again throughout this series. And there's a challenge in that, a challenge to follow Jesus in this new way. As we prepare for prayer today, uh, if you are undergoing a challenge right now, a difficulty, I invite you to share those with our prayer team. You can email prayers at sycamorecreekchurch.org. We'd love to pray for you and to support you as you go through life. This past week was Martin Luther King Jr. Day on Monday. And uh, as we are part of a movement for racial justice in our country, I'm going to invite you to pray with me that we might more faithfully follow Jesus and live out loving those around us as God has loved us with all people. Let's pray. God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your love shown for us by becoming one of us, by living among us, by teaching, by having an amazing following of people around Jesus. And then, God, we thank you for Jesus' death and for the sacrifice he made on our behalf. We thank you for the freedom and the healing and the forgiveness that we have through Jesus. And we claim that in the name of the resurrected Jesus this morning. God, help your Holy Spirit to work in and through us so that we might be transformed and become more like you, that we might grow in love. And and God, this week, as we contemplate people who maybe are different than us, people who have different ethnic backgrounds, different races, we pray, God, that we would see your image in each other, that we would reach out and extend a hand of friendship to those around us, And that we would fight for justice and for equality for everyone around us. God, help us to live out the love that you have shown us to people around us. Help us to live into Dr. King's legacy where he continually pointed others to you through champion racial justice. God, may we be a part of that as well. May we be a part of sharing your love with everyone around us. We can't do that on our own, God. We need your help. We need your Holy Spirit to work in us and to empower that movement. Help us to make our communities, to make our state, to make our country a better place for everyone to encounter you and to be able to worship you. God, we thank you today for our ability to gather to worship you and we pray a blessing upon our time together. May we encounter you this morning through gathering online to worship you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite you to continue praying by joining me in the Lord's Prayer. Will you pray that prayer with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As I mentioned earlier, today we are continuing our series, You're Not Far, that's taking us through the book of Mark. Uh, we have the lead pastor of Sycamore Creek, Tom Arthur, with us this morning to give a message on Jesus' kingdom, called Kingdom Great, and how Jesus' kingdom is different than the kingdoms we have in this world. But first, here are our hosts for this morning. Good morning from our couch to yours. I'm Kristen. I'm Madison. I'm Martha. I'm Isaac. And we're your hosts this morning. We invite you to connect and take the next steps by filling out the connection card link in the comments. We love to interact with you during today's worship service. Say hi. Hi. Chat. Share emojis Share and comment hands. during the worship service in the chat box. You can check in on social media for worship using hashtag CouchChurch. While you're there, share this video with friends by creating a watch party. Today's message begins, begins with this. this. Have you ever been so close to something, but so far away? About a month ago, I lost my reading glasses. Now, I can see without my glasses. It's just that everything is a little bit blurry. It's just kind of frustrating to look at your computer or try to read. So I tore my house apart. I looked underneath my desk. I looked underneath my bed. I looked underneath the couch. I looked in the cushions in between my couch. I looked in my drawers in my bedroom. I looked in the drawers in my desk. I looked in the cabinets. I looked in the bathroom, in the cabinets in the bathroom, in the drawers in the bathroom. I went out into our kitchen and our living room. I looked in the cabinets in the kitchen and the drawers in the kitchen. I looked in the wardrobe in my living room, my wardrobe desk. I looked where I keep the keyboard. I looked where I keep the, the computer. I tore the house apart. I probably spent two hours looking for my glasses. Now, my wife and my kids were away that week, and so I didn't even have them to blame for misplacing my glasses. It was so frustrating. Where were my glasses? About a week or two ago, I was on vacation, and I went to my wardrobe desk, where I keep a box of cables. I was looking for some kind of cable. I don't even remember what kind of cable it was. I was just looking for a cable and I opened up that box and there were my glasses. Well, you know what? I, I've got some new glasses and I've got my old glasses. What do you think? Do you like them? They're red. Well, peace friends. I, I'm Pastor Tom Arthur, the pastor at Sycamore Creek Church in Lansing, Michigan. And today we are in week five of a series called You're Not Far. It's a story that should have died in Rome. Yeah, that's me. That's a Roman centurion. <laughs> but it didn't. It should have died in Nero's Rome. Oh, wait, not that Neo. Uh, Nero's Rome. You see, it, it was in a prison, like this prison. In fact, when I was in Rome several years ago, I took this picture. It was a picture where Peter, one of Jesus' closest friends, 
is said to have died. And the story that we're telling today is Peter's retelling of his remembrance of following Jesus, as told to his close friend, John Mark, who brought us the book of Mark, the Gospel of Mark. Now, we got to remember that the Bible wasn't being written at that moment. Mark wasn't trying to write the Bible. He was just sitting in a jail cell with Peter saying, listen, tell me, Peter, about your experiences with Jesus. So the book of Mark is Peter's remembrance, perhaps at the end of his life while he sits in jail, that ends up today for us as the Gospel of Mark. Peter gives us the whole point of his book right up front. He's sitting there in the jail cell and he tells Mark this. He says, the time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Face and embrace God is what Peter's saying. You are not far. God is near. As close as the box at your feet at your desk. Have you ever lost something that was so near, but you just couldn't find it? How'd you end up finding it? Or maybe you never did. Let's talk about that. We've all had those experiences of losing something that was just so close <laughs> and eventually we find it and we're like, how did we ever lose that? Well, today what I want to talk to you about is I want to talk to you about four words that Jesus gives to us. For all of us who are in a leadership position, you might not think of yourself as a leader, a leader in the marketplace or a leader in your work or your business. You, you lead somebody. You, you lead somebody in your home. You lead at your school, you lead a small group, there's somebody who is following you. And if you're a leader of any kind today, there's four words that Jesus has for you. Now we're gonna to get to those four words in a moment, but those four words, they stop me in my tracks every single time. In fact, I'll tell you what, they really convict me quite often. And when I don't pay attention to them, I lose a little bit of my soul and I lose a bit of respect of the people around me. But when I follow them, they give me life. Right now, we are in uh, what we like to call a Bible series. Now you gotta remember, Mark wasn't trying to write the Bible, Mark was just trying to keep track of Peter's experiences of Jesus. But we're in a series where we're taking a, a deep dive into one book of the Bible. And that book of the Bible is the Gospel of Mark. We're spending eight weeks going really deep into Mark's Gospel. Last week in our series, You're Not Far, we took a look at how Jesus got really upset at the religious leaders of the day who elevated their own traditions above the traditions of God, above the commandments of God. He calls them hypocrites and then he sends them packing. And after that, he takes his uh, followers up to Caesarea Philippi 
where he has a conversation with them. Jesus asks his disciples who they say he is, and they say that he's the Messiah. And Jesus accepts that, that title, that designation. And then he sets his face southward and he starts to head to Jerusalem, the big city. That's Jerusalem as it is today. It's not like that back in Jesus' day, but you get the point. He reminds them of what they can expect when they get to the big city after all. He then begins to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. This was so confusing to them. You see, they had just said that Jesus was the Messiah, and Jesus had said, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. I'm the Messiah. And here Jesus is talking about dying. Can the Messiah die? Can the anointed one die? They are so confused. I mean, do bad things happen to good people? Jesus is the goodest person that they've ever met. He's not just the goodest person. He's the goddest person. So they turn to Peter. They say, Peter, you got you to gotta fix this with Jesus. So Peter takes Jesus aside and he begins to rebuke him. <laughs> Jesus, you're scaring the children with this talk. You, you got to stop talking like this. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. <laughs> it's like a rebuking contest going on here. He says, Satan, get behind me. Try that with your closest friend or your wife. It's not going to go over very well. <laughs> Jesus says, you don't have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. You want a kingdom like all the other kingdoms, but I'm not that kind of a king. That's not my kingdom. And to emphasize the point, he calls the crowd to him and with his disciples, and he says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. It's as if Jesus is saying, listen, from now on, it's going to cost you something to follow me. Now for the disciples, that was absolutely literal. Like they had to leave their nets and their boats to follow Jesus to go south to Jerusalem. Although it might be very literal for us as well. An extraordinary invitation was disguised in this ominous declaration. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. Everybody dies no matter how well you take care of yourself. Everybody's life is going to end at some point. But if you live for yourself, at the end of your life, the only thing that you'll have to show is yourself. So here's the invitation that Jesus puts to his disciples. Whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. He was inviting them to live their life on purpose. They had a decision to make. They could stay up in Galilee and they could go on fishing just like they do every single day, mending their nets and hauling in the fish. Or they could decide to follow Jesus to take that adventure and see where it leads, to live on purpose. Everybody ends up somewhere in life. The intentional ones end up somewhere on purpose. We have a decision to make as well. Will we be consumed with preserving our lives, which ultimately we can't do no matter how well we take good care of ourselves? Will we say yes to our fear? Fear always invites us to follow the path of self-preservation. If you give in to the fear long enough, you'll neither preserve your life nor have anything to show at the end of it. Or here's the other part of the decision, the other option. Will you follow Jesus? Will you, will I, will we ask that disturbing question? What does love require of me right now? Peter's sitting in a jail cell and he's telling this whole story to John Mark and he has to have been thinking back on that day and thinking about this is the place where fear started to grip my heart, where I had to make a decision. Do I follow Jesus or do I stay in Galilee, live as a fisherman and die as a fisherman? We each have that same decision too. Every single day we have that decision. Right now in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of COVID, post a violent insurrection, failed violent insurrection at our capital, we have the decision to make, what kind of story are we going to tell? What story will Peter tell? Will it be the story of staying in Galilee and becoming a fisherman or staying a fisherman? Or will it be the story of following Jesus? Let's live our lives in a way during COVID, during 
this uh, post-insurrection in a way that we live a story worth telling. We're writing that story every single day. In every little and big decision that we make, the choices we make will determine the stories that we tell. As easy as it would be to retreat into fear, that decision means that at the end of the lo our lives, we won't even preserve our own life. We'd lose the opportunity to do something extraordinary with this life we've been given. So Peter and the rest of the disciples, they make a decision to follow Jesus south to Jerusalem. John Mark tells us that they left that place and passed through Galilee. They were on their way up to Jerusalem with Jesus leading the way. Now, the Bible always talks about going up to Jerusalem, even though on the map you're going south to Jerusalem. That's because Jerusalem is a higher elevation. You're coming up out of the valley, up to Jerusalem. Now, notice that it says that Jesus was leading the way. He's leading the way uphill. Reminds me of that Onion article where dad is, uh, spends the entire vacation six feet ahead of his family. That's me. Give me a shout out in the comments if that's you too, whether you're a dad or a mom. This is so confusing to the disciples uh, because here it is that, you know, Jesus is leading the way to this grisly like prediction or prophecy that he's just made about what's going to happen to him in Jerusalem. So again, Jesus takes the 12 aside and he tells them what is going to happen to him. We are going to Jerusalem, he said, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him and spit on him, flog him and kill him. And then Jesus turns and heads south. So James and John uh, finally catch up to Jesus. Remember, he was uh, leading the way. He was up there keeping a good pace, I'm sure, heading up to Jerusalem. And I kind of imagine them sort of looking over their shoulder, making sure that they're out of earshot of the other 10 disciples. And then they get real close up to Jesus and they whisper, uh, Jesus, there's something that we want you to do for us. Jesus backs up and says, well, what is it that you want me to do for you? And they say, you know what, Jesus, uh, it's really bad about all that flogging and spitting and dying and crucifying stuff. But when you come into your kingdom, we want to sit on your right and the other one on your left when you come in your glory. We'll just hold back during all that spitting and flogging. When have you been in a situation where you sought your own benefit rather than the benefit of those around you? Let's talk about that. You don't know what you're asking for, Jesus tells him. You still don't get it. You still don't get it. So a few verses later, when the other 10 hear about this, they are indignant, probably because they're thinking about like the same thing. We want the benefits. In fact, they get into an argument about who is the greatest. Jesus has already covered this with them once before, but he does it again. Jesus is sort of patient with our <laughs> lack of understanding. 
So Jesus calls them together one more time and he says, sit down, guys. Uh, let's talk about this before we get to Jerusalem, just to make sure that we know why we're going there. You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles, they lord it over them. You know how they rule mercilessly. You know how they rule for their own benefit. And their high officials, Jesus says, exercise authority over them. If I were to put this into my own words, I'd say something like this. Uh, you know how those in positions of authority leverage their authority for their own benefit? You know how those who have resources and influence leverage their resources and influence to gain even more resources and influence for themselves? The, the disciples likely thought, yeah, we do. That's why we're asking to sit on your right hand and on your left. And because we'd like to be your number two and your number three for those sweet benefits in the kingdom. Jesus looks at them and looks at me and looks at you. And he says these four words that stop us in our tracks. Four words that if you're a leader in any place in your life, in the community, in the church, in your family, in your school, they make you a leader worth following. Jesus says, not so with you. Not so with you. That's not how my administration is going to work. That's not the kind of king I'm going to be. That's not the kind of kingdom I'm trying to build. I've come to reverse the order of things. Instead, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. And before they catch their breath, and whoever wants to be first among you must be servant of all. Before they can object, he stares south towards Jerusalem, and he takes their excuses away, and you're in my excuses as well. And he says, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Any questions? James? John? Any questions, gentlemen? All right, let's go to Jerusalem. Now, they had to be totally confused. <laughs> what is Jesus talking about? Giving his life as a ransom? Dying? Being a servant? Being the least of all? This is not what I signed up for. They're thinking, maybe we should have stayed back in Galilee. I wonder if you've ever worked for somebody who did this kind of thing that Jesus is talking about. That They used their benefit, their power, their resources, their influence to benefit you. Have you ever worked for somebody like that? Let's talk about it. It's pretty amazing when you, somebody that has influence over you uses their influence to benefit you, isn't it? Well, remember, Peter's sitting in a jail. He's talking to John Mark. In some ways, he's using his own influence, even though he's in jail, to benefit you and me. And so Peter continues the story telling John Mark. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, 
son of God, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him and told him, be quiet. After all, Jesus is an important rabbi. He is on his way to his most important appointment. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, Peter's sitting in prison and he's talking to John Mark and he's probably says to John Mark, listen, we, we couldn't believe that this guy was making all this noise. And then what Jesus did next? You know, Jesus just told us like he's leading the way uphill. We're all trying to keep up with him. And he does something that is totally unexpected to us. Jesus stopped. He stopped. Can you believe that? He just, he just told us how important it is for him to get to Jerusalem, to be spit and flogged and, and mobbed. And here's this blind guy, and he stops for him. It's as if Jesus is trying to illustrate this not-so-with-you message that he's just told his disciples. This is so convicting to me. I'm busy. Are you busy? You know, <laughs> this COVID thing, even though we're working at home, even though so many things have stopped, it feels like I'm busier than I've ever been. I'm busy, and yet Jesus stops. Sometimes following requires stopping. Where do you need to stop right now in order to follow Jesus? So Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they did. And throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and he came to Jesus. And then we read one of those lines that, you know, it seems like nobody would make this up because it's so obvious. Uh, it's even just a little embarrassing what Jesus asks him here. He says, what do you want me to do for you? I think in that moment, he looks back at James and John, maybe gives them a little wink. And he says to him, do you want to sit on my left or do you want to sit on my right? And Bartimaeus says, I want to see. Now, that's a great thing to ask for. I pray this every day. Heavenly Father, help me to see the way that you see. Help me to see the world the way you see it. Help me to see what I have in my hands the way that you see what I have in my hands. Help me to see what your kingdom, your invisible kingdom, is, looks like right now. So go, Jesus says. Your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight and he followed Jesus along the road to Jerusalem, a date with destiny. All right, we're going to pick up the story next week right there where we left off. But I want to go back to those four words just for a minute. Not so with you. What would it look like in your area of the world and in the world in general? What would it look like in your family, in your workplace, in your school, in your home? if you followed that kind of leadership, that not so with you kind of leadership, if you leveraged your power and your resources for the benefit of those with less power and fewer resources, this is another application of the law of Christ to love as we've been loved. And it starts with a simple question that Jesus asked Bartimaeus, what can I do to help? How can I loan you my strength? How can I throw my weight behind your situation? What does support look like for you right now? When you leverage your power and your resources for those who have less power and less resources, you're doing the work of God, the kingdom of God. You're, you're following Jesus in his kind of kingdom. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. When you lead from that posture, you're a leader worth following. So here's a question for all of us today. What's one thing you can do this week to demonstrate that not so with you leadership at your work, in your home, in your school, wherever you find yourself? Let's talk about that.
Thank you, Tom, for that message. Not so with you. May we live into God's kingdom's values. Uh, the kingdom of God is near and you're not far. I have a couple of announcements for us. And the first is that we would love to help get you connected at Sycamore Creek. We'd love to help you take next steps in following Jesus. And you can do that by filling out a digital connection card at www.sycamorecreekchurch.org backslash connection. If you do that for the first time, you fill out a connection card for the first time, we have a gift that we'd like to send you. It's a book by Max Lucado. You'll get through this. We'll send it right from Amazon right to your house if you fill out that connection card today for the first time. Another way that we'd like to help you grow in your faith is by getting involved in a small group. We're in a group link month right now. It's a month where we link people with groups. We'd love to get you into a group of people to help you to grow in your faith and to get to know others better. God did not design us to go through life alone, and that's been one of the big challenges, right, of this pandemic. Oh, it's been tough. Small groups are a great place to get the relationships that we crave, especially in the winter, especially during a pandemic. There's a whole bunch of great groups. You can check out the list of groups and sign up for a group at www.sycamorecreekchurch.org slash small groups. Speaking of small groups, one that I want to highlight is that coming up in February, we are going to do a Friday night and Saturday online marriage retreat. With the pandemic, we've had a lot of changes for a lot of families, uh, particularly families that have kids, and it makes marriage difficult. Marriage is difficult already, right? It's, it's a tough thing. We want to spend some time to focus on marriage and to focus on strengthening marriage. And we have Rebecca Fitton who will be helping us uh, to coordinate that weekend and to help guide our content. And we think it's really important for couples to set aside time to focus on growing their relationship. And so we'll do that on February 25 and 26. You can sign up for that small group through the link I just shared for small groups. Now, there's a $25 cost, a registration cost per couple to enter that. Now, part of the bonus is once you register, we'll send you a $50 gift card so that you can have dinner on us. We want you to have a date night. We want you to spend time together and to not have to worry about cooking. So dinner will be on us. It's a really good deal, right? Check out that group and other groups again at that link, sycamorecreekchurch.org slash small groups. We have a town hall coming up tomorrow night, Monday, January 25th. It's at 7 p.m. It'll be online on Zoom. Uh, it's a great opportunity to hear what's happening at Sycamore Creek. We'll have a time of question and answer. I hope to see you there tomorrow night. Again, the link for that is on the screen. It's sycamorecreekchurch.org slash town hall. As part of our worship service on Sunday, January 31st, we will have online communion. Uh, worship with us starting at 9.30 on Facebook and on YouTube. And then our worship will continue on Zoom. Uh, you'll see the link on the screen with online communion. In order to prepare for online communion, you'll need bread or crackers and juice or wine. I hope to see you then. I want to thank you for your giving to support the mission of Sycamore Creek. A reminder, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can give to support our mission. One of the ways in particular I want to highlight is that you can give online by going to sycamorecreekchurch.org slash give. Thank you for your giving that allows us to make a difference, sharing God's love with each other and with our communities, and helping us to grow in that love. And one of the ways that we accomplish our mission is through our Potterville Food Pantry. Uh, our Potterville Food Pantry continues to pass out thousands of pounds of food each month. It's amazing how much of a difference we make. Uh, the second Tuesday of each month, we have our food pantry uh, that continues to operate regularly. The third Tuesday of the month, we have our bread and baked good drop, which is what we had this past Tuesday. I had a lot of fun helping out with the bread and baked good drop. We, we passed out several thousand pounds of bread and baked goods. We also had onions and butter and peanut butter and eggs and hamburger patties and apples and... I think that's all of it, but there was a lot. It was so much food to pass out and it's so much fun to see how grateful our community is for the support that we provide. I wanna thank you for your generous giving that allows us to have missions like a food pantry. 
And I also want to celebrate with you. Last week, I celebrated our Christmas offering and all the money that we came in through our Christmas offering. Uh, We were able to donate $1,500 this week to our Potterville Food Pantry to continue to provide food and make a difference in our community. Thank you for your giving. That directly leads to us supporting and having our food pantry here in Potterville. Here is Kevin with our final worship song. So Tom talked about how the leadership that Jesus um, offers to us is different than what we're really used to in so many areas of our life. He talked about about his love, his servant attitude toward us, and uh, we're going to sing together in response to that about his faithfulness.
a great week. Go in peace, and I hope to see you soon.